Today on Hands-On Photography, I'm finally getting around to talking about one of these things here. This is a drone. We're gonna talk about getting started with drone photography and drone video featuring this interesting little Nano Plus from Alltail Robotics. Y'all stay tuned. Once again, time for the Twit Audience Survey. The annual survey helps us understand you so we can make your listening experience even better. It only takes a couple of minutes. But it sure helps us out a lot. Completely optional, but if you could, please go to twit.tv slash survey23. That's twit.tv slash survey23. You have till the end of the month, but if you would do me a favor and do it today, I can stop mentioning it. Twit.tv slash survey23. And thanks in advance. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by ACI Learning. If you love IT Pro, you'll love ACI Learning. ACI Learning offers fully customizable training for your team in formats of all types of learners across audit, cybersecurity, and IT. From entry-level training to putting people on the moon, ACI Learning has got you covered. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands on Photography. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Appreciate y'all joining me here on the show each and every Thursday. Really does mean a lot. But hey, let's just go ahead and dive right on into this week's episode. OK, uh, so drones. Yes, we're going to talk about drones this week. Drones have been a fascinating piece of tech to follow over the last week. I don't know, maybe 10 years or so, you know, you had DJI and you had Alltail Robotics and a bunch of other more budget friendly drones that provided yet another creative way for uh, content creators to grab some beautiful photos and video. Uh, and basically that was aerial, aerial photos and aerial footage. Now, some of you have asked about drones for your photography and video, and I'll just be real with you. It's not for everybody. It's just not. Now, are drones fun to fly and are great to capture images for, from a video perspective um, like you've never been able to? Yeah, they're absolutely fun for that. But most of you as hands-on photography listeners and viewers, I can't necessarily recommend a drone because, you know, some of you, yes, some, most of you, <laughs> no, I just, I just can't. Why? Because of return on investment, essentially. Now I get it. You, you, you're loyal twit listeners and I know how you all love your tech and you want to get that shiny new piece of tech, but that doesn't always mean you need <laughs> that shiny new piece of tech. That doesn't always mean that new shiny tech is going to be useful for you. In short, drones can be a bit of a fad, you know, um, that many photographers that tend to fall prey to. And on the other hand, if you're someone that's that's ready to put in the work and actually get a return on that six hundred dollar to over a thousand dollar investment, then, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about drones. So with that said, let's get into um, the ins and outs of a drone. Now, there are several different things to consider from a tech spec standpoint, as well as the uh, real world considerations. From a tech standpoint, the actual camera on a drone, they're not bad. Um, well, how good are they? <laughs> I, I, I didn't say they were horrible, but I'm not going to say they're great. They're just not bad. Uh, so think about your latest and greatest smartphone. Think about your, you know, the iPhone 14 or, or Pixel 7 Pro or what have you. Just think about those phones. Most consumer drones have camera sensors that are quite comparable uh, to the smartphones that we're that we're using today, uh, whereas they have an image sensor that's at best half an inch in size. And due to the pixel bending magic, they can offer lots of quotes, but no air quotes, megapixels for image capture. OK, so some of them are even offering up to 50 megapixels. It's a big number, right? Um, the drone actually that I have here that I'll talk about today, it actually, it, it offers up to um, 50 megapixels for their image capture. 
Now, most drones, they also offer like stabilized 4K UHD video resolution, and it's usually 24 to 30 frames per second, which is fine for people that are trying to, you know, create and capture some bit of cinematic footage, if you will. Okay. Now, this sounds like a nice camera in the sky, essentially. Right. So but then I got to admit, there's a catch. As, as I mentioned back on episode 147 of the show, uh, that's when we we're talking about that brand spanking new iPhone and it's 48 quote megapixels. <laughs> You're going to be dealing with the pixel binning and a megapixel count that you shouldn't really take too seriously. Also, you're the subject. You're, you're subject to um, limited performance in low light situations. For those of you that have APS-C cameras, which are crop sensor camera bodies, uh, your current camera body will perform better in low light than a consumer drone. It will, period. There's no debate on that. Um, so now can you still create good looking images and, 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 and good looking video with a drone, a consumer drone? Yeah, absolutely. You just have to understand the drones, uh, the drones cameras limitations, just like you would with any other camera. You know, if you have a full frame camera versus an APS-C camera, you you have to know the limitations of said APS-C versus that full frame. This is no different here. So, yeah, we, we, we can dive a little bit more into the 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 real world aspects to consider uh, when you want to get out there and buy a drone for yourself. So we'll get into that. But first, I want to take a few minutes to thank this week's fine sponsor, the folks at ACI Learning. Hands-on photography is brought to you by ACI Learning. You know, IT Pro brings you engaging and entertaining IT training. Now, IT Pro is a part of ACI Learning, and boy, we are pumped about that. Together, IT Pro and ACI Learning are expanding their production capabilities and bringing you the content and the learning style you need at any stage of your career development. Whether you're an individual training for yourself or you want to train your whole team, ACI Learning and IT Pro, they've got you covered. Now, you can join over 225,000 members. Wow, that's a lot of people. Uh, members of the IT Pro Learning Community and access more than 6,800 hours of content and new content. That's crazy. It's over 6,800 hours already and they're still adding content pretty much daily. Wow. Uh, that's pretty prolific. You can get team training for CompTIA, Microsoft IT training, Cisco training, Linux training, Apple training, security. Yeah, definitely get that security training. Cloud and a whole lot more. Now, one of the most widely recognized beginner certifications is the CompTIA A plus cert. Yep, that's that's like a normal thing nowadays. If you can if you can get access to trying that out, please go do that. CompTIA courses from IT Pro and ACI Learning make it easy to level up your employees who have vested interest in cybersecurity. The most popular certifications offered by ACI Learning include the likes of the CISSP, AWS, and CCNA. And then there's other in-demand tech skills and certification courses offered too, uh, such as a tech support specialist and computer user support specialist and uh, information security analysts, a whole lot of different certs out there. Certifications show more than proving the skill set. They let your customers see that you are committed to keeping your organization up to date. And ACI Learning and IT Pro are with you every step of the way. With an IT Pro business plan, ACI Learning offers fully customizable training for your team. Track your team's results, manage your seats, assign and unassign team members, and access monthly usage reports. Uh, you can see metrics like logons and the viewing times and track whether the, the tests and, and courses are completed or not. You can easily manage your teams. You can manage subsets of users or teams by providing them customized assignments. Um, you can monitor the progress there as well. And you can take a look at reporting on the usage of the platform. And assignments can be full courses or they can just be individual episodes within the course. That's pretty slick. Now, full access to advanced reporting is also offered. You get immediate insight to your team's viewing patterns and progress over any period of time with visual reports. Respected companies and government agencies around the globe turn to IT Pro and ACI Learning year 
after year to help them maintain their competitive edge, folks. Supporting organizations across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness, ACI Learning keeps you and your team at the top of your game. Okay, so now listen up. From entry level training to putting people on the moon, ACI Learning has got you covered. Maintain your company's competitive edge with ACI Learning and visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. That's go.acilearning.com slash twit. And for those of you looking to start with a standard or premium individual IT membership, please be sure to use twit30 to get 30% off your purchase. Thank you so much to the folks at ACI Learning for supporting me and this fine show, Hands On Photography. Now, so let's go ahead and dive back into more of this, this the real world aspect of things to consider when buying your, your, your first drone and getting it ready for photography and video. So next thing to consider is location, you know. That whole phrase, location, 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 that's that's the king, right? So when you're using drones or UAVs, as they're noted legally, <laughs> in, if you're using drones or UAVs in public spaces, with there are some certain uh, limitations to consider. Depending on the drone, you can't fly it just anywhere. Uh, drones are seriously dangerous, folks. I, I don't know if I can really uh, um, drive that point home any more than, than now. It, it, they are really, really dangerous. Crashing a drone into a tree, that's one thing, okay? Now, crashing a drone into someone's home, someone's building, or into a person, that's a whole other heap of trouble that you're looking at. And if you're a hobbyist, yeah, you can legally fly your drone. That's that's fine, uh, as long as it's under 250 grams in weight. Um, but that only means you, you don't have to fly it you don't have to register it with the FAA. So yeah, if you're a hobbyist and you want to get a small drone, sure, you can do that. You can fly it. It's okay. But you still have some rules to follow. Now, if it's over 250 grams, yes, you do need to register it with the FAA. Now, okay, so let's say you haven't registered it yet or you don't have to register it. Some of the rules to think about, uh, you can only fly under 400 uh, AGL or that's above ground level. That's your altitude. You can't be flying up any higher than that. I don't, I honestly don't recommend it. I've tried to fly up above uh, 400, 400 feet. And quite honestly, no, it, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's actually a bit scary seeing your piece of tech that, that high up in the sky. So I don't recommend it. And quite frankly, the uh, view and perspective doesn't really change that much because of that tiny image sensor on that camera. You can only see so much and only get so much detail. So I don't recommend that. Even though the drone can get up pretty high, don't get that high. Then you have to consider you can't really fly these things next to airports for obvious reasons. Why would you want to fly it near an airport? But if there's a situation like where I was in back when I lived in North Carolina, I wasn't next door to an airport, but there was an airport a handful of miles away, you know? So I had to make sure if I was going to fly at a particular time or a particular day, I needed to call the air traffic control to let them know when I was thinking about flying and how long I was going to be flying and where I was going to be flying. And then I had to wait on an approval for them to say, OK, yes, you can fly on such and such day. That doesn't mean I get the approval right then. That doesn't mean that they'll even approve it at all. But those are the rules. And quite frankly, nobody I know does this stuff. They never call and it surprises me. But those are the rules. You should follow the rules. OK. And since you're a photographer that's looking to get, you know, a good return on your drone investment, uh, more than likely you'll be capturing images or video uh, for some level of income or revenue. That means you'll need to be part 107 certified. Uh, this certification further proves that you understand the you understand the rules of uh, and regulations of flying a drone in public airspace, and definitely will force you to, you know, be accountable for your actions. You know, you got that that piece of paper, that certification, and spent all that time studying and paid the money for that course. You know, and that's like a badge of honor, and you you know 
says, hey, you know what? I know what I'm doing and I'm going to be accountable for whatever it is I'm doing with this drone out here in this public space. You know what I'm saying? OK, take a breath. Whew. All right. So you still interested? <laughs> you're still interested in getting the drone? All right. So let me tell you about the one that I have here from the folks at Altel Robotics. Now, I've been a fan of Altel Robotics for quite a while. I don't know how many years, but I got on their bandwagon back when they had the X Star Premium drone. Uh, this wasn't the tiny drones like what we have today, but this thing was it was a little bit larger. And I absolutely enjoyed flying that thing around. It was just it was a lot of fun. And I got a lot of n nice photos and videos with it. And the main thing I really enjoyed about it is it, it was orange. That that drone was was orange. And I got to tell you, believe it or not, looking up into the sky to see your drone is way easier, way easier if it's orange versus it being, you know, black or white or something like that. Now, I still have it and I still fly from time to time on my leisure. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, I'll tell Robotics, they were kind enough to send this drone over. They, they, they lended me the Nano Plus. Let me see if I can put it in focus there. There you go. This is the Nano Plus drone. And um, I've been playing with it for a handful of weeks now. Sadly, when they sent it to me, it was right around the time we got all of that wonderful rain and atmospheric river. So I'm just now getting around to it. Sorry, I'll tell robotics, but you know, you know, I can do about the weather and I didn't want to take this out in the rain because duh, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> but I was able to finally capture some um, some stills and some video for uh, te testing purposes. This uh, Nano Plus, that's what it's called. This this thing weighs about two hundred and forty nine grams. And that's roughly it's, it's roughly the size of an of a smartphone. If I hold it up next to an iPhone here, it's. Yeah, I think this is an 11 Pro or something other. And it's roughly the same size as that. Uh, perfectly small enough to be portable, to stick in your pocket if you need to, or just stick it in your backpack. It's, it's pretty nice. And again, it's very, very lightweight. The camera on here. OK, the camera on here, it comes with a three axis gimbal that's going to allow you to have some steady shots for stills and video. And it also has a one half inch sensor on it. Okay. One, just a half an inch image sensor. And believe it or not, that may be fudged a little bit. It's still pretty daggum small, uh, but it does have the capability of 50 megapixels for stills. And it does allow you to shoot UHD 4k video up to 30 frames a second and HDR, which was pretty interesting. And it also has an F 1.9 aperture, uh, again, similar to your smartphones, having those really, really fast apertures on it because, hey, you need a light on those tiny, tiny sensors. Um, next is the flight time. You can fly this one around for about they, they spec it out at 28 minutes. And in my experience, I can say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. I got anywhere between 25, 28 minutes and it was plenty of time to uh, to fly around and try this thing out. All right. And when you're flying it around, you have uh, image transmission that's rated up to 10 kilometers. I don't know what that is in imperial in, uh, you know, our good old imperial terms, but it says 10 kilometers. And what that means is as you're flying it out, it sends the, the image back to the remote control so you can see it on your on your screen, what you're looking at. And that's rated up to 10 kilometers. Let me tell you, don't buy into that. OK, because mm, you're supposed to have a line of sight. When, when you're flying your drones and if you're trying to get 10 kilometers out, I, I got a hunch y'all y'all eyes ain't that good. So don't push that. Try to keep your, your drone in line of sight just so you're covered under the rules. But it's nice to know that it has that spec. Uh, in my experience, it does work fairly well with it, with the drone being further far away from me, even though I can still see it. The image transmission comes back pretty quickly with very, very low latency, making it easy to fly and not run into things. Speaking of running into things, this drone does come with obstacle avoidance like most drones do today. And I got to tell you, I found the obstacle avoidance to be just a little bit too good. <laughs> I mean, as soon as you fire the drone up and, and, and launch it to take off, the obstacle avoidance was going off. Why? Because it felt that the drone was too low to the ground. Ah, I get it. So as soon as you fire it up, it's going to beep, 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 beep. But make sure you just push it the altitude up maybe 
two to three feet and it stops. It, it's fine. So I guess having a overambitious obstacle avoidance sensor is a good thing, right? Yeah, I guess. Okay. From a photo perspective, the camera is just as good as my Pixel phone or your Pixel phone or your iPhone. Uh, the images are sharp where they need to be and it has pretty vibrant color. The video side was very interesting, I got to admit. The Nano Plus, you know, it offers HDR video and shooting in log format. Now, if you're not familiar with log format in, in log video in general and getting it to Rec. 709, make sure you go back to episode 122 of hands-on photography where I give a full explanation and tutorial going through color correction and color grade and talking about, you know, going from log to rec 709. Okay. There anyway. So once you shoot with log, um, log footage on this drone, it, it was, it was okay in my experience because typically when you're shooting in log, you're going to have a lot more flexibility in post from color correcting to color grading. I found that I couldn't really push it as much as I could versus just shooting the standard Rec. 709 format on this camera. The Rec. 709 uh, footage, it looked fine too, and I could really have some fun with it. Uh, granted, the footage was a little bit boosted in the color, in my opinion, and a little, a little bit too saturated, but that was easy to fix. You just dial back the saturation and post. But now, granted, some people, they like that. So that's probably why they did it. But yeah, the whole log format, it, it was a bit of a challenge. I mean, Autel even provides some LUTs that you can apply to the log footage. And even with that LUT in place, it was still a little, mm, it just, you couldn't really get too creative with the look on it, in my opinion. But just standard Rec. 709, yeah, you can go to town and have fun with that. It's good stuff. The footage from this, this Nano Plus, it's, it's pretty sharp and in, in, vibrant like i said um and then you have all of these other extra features such as the active tracking and, and the orbiting tools that are all built in usually you just click a button and it'll do it the active tracking is something that'll be cool for folks that want to do vlogging and you know like follow their car going down the street or something like that or follow themselves on a hike uh just to give a, another new perspective from your um for your vlog or what have you uh, not necessarily my thing, but I could I could see it being used from time to time from popular vloggers out there. So I get it now. Finally, the Nano Plus is fairly priced at the time of recording this video at six hundred and seventy nine dollars. And that's down from nine hundred and forty nine dollars regular price. I do recommend this drone to people that are, you know, you got to be serious about this stuff. If you're someone that's you know looking to get an extra bit of revenue or, or, or income from shooting aerial footage and aerial imagery. Yeah, I can, I could recommend this drone. It's pretty nice. Again, the size of it is great. I mean, look at it. It just fits in my hand. Like it's nothing. <laughs> it's so small and the images are pretty coming out of it. But again, with it being a small camera, make sure you work with the um, limitations of a small sensor. So yeah, if you're serious about it, I think the 679 price point is pretty good and fair. Now, if you're just wanting something to just, you know, sort of putter around the neighborhood with or putter around your favorite field or pasture or, or hiking trail or whatever, I don't recommend you spend $679. Okay. I recommend you wait for the price to drop to maybe 400 bucks, something like that. Um, Cause that's pretty pricey. If you're going to spend $679, go get another lens. <laughs> you know, lenses are great investments. All right. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for being loyal hands on photography listeners. Be sure to continue to share the show out with all of your friends, families, enemies. Uh, send them to the website, twit.tv slash H O P. That's twit.tv slash H O P for hands on photography. And you'll see all of the subscription options there. You'll see that we're available on Spotify. We're available on Apple Podcasts, and we also have a YouTube channel and whatever podcatcher you're using. So just subscribe in your favorite podcatcher of choice. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to shoot me an email to hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. I answer them all as soon as I can. 
And um, if you have images that you'd like me to critique, you can send those video. If you you know are curious for a critique, send that too. I'm totally fine with that um, because we do talk about video processing and, and shooting on here. And uh, if it's something that you're fine with me using on the show, please make sure you mention that I have your consent. Just give me your written consent to use your image on the show because I don't want to share your, your images without your consent. That's just not how I roll. All right. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week. Thank you, brother. Love you. And uh, hey, y'all keep doing what you're doing. Keep sharing the show and safely create and dominate. And I shall see you next time. Take care. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus Membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.